So we're going to look at the difference equations from the very generality. And from the very generality, my difference equation, it is something like this. So I, well, I just, I took the, I start with the xn, and then I add up the some previous values of my sequence, xn take one, xn n take two, uh, and I just continue this on r times, you see, and I take them with some coefficients, a1, a2, a r take one, a r, and I equate everything to zero. Effectively, you can convert any difference equation to the form like this. In particular, the, the other two, the, the two equations we just saw on the slide before, I can convert them into the form like this. One of them was exactly in the form like this. The first one is just a simple just rearrangement of terms. Actually, we'll come to this later. So this is, this is something I'm going to call the difference equation in very generality. The coefficients here, a1, a2, and ar take 1, and all of them, they can be complex numbers, complex numbers in general. We don't make any restrictions on those. And for this equation, there is a method how to find fundamental solutions. Those solutions which will spawn the other solutions to meet any initial conditions. And the result, I, I'm, I'm going to frame it as a lemma, which will give you the method how to find these solutions. It will be two, there will be two parts in this lemma. And here how the complex numbers actually work here. Look at this. The first part says, if... I have a complex number alpha, if I have a complex number alpha such that it is a solution to the polynomial P, where P, look at the polynomial P. This is a polynomial which is combined out of these coefficients, A1, A2, AR, take one, AR. So it's a polynomial of deg degree R, the highest term is one. So if I build a polynomial of these coefficients, I think this is, this equals zero is a typo. If I build a polynomial out of these coefficients, and if I take a root to such a polynomial, then the sequence of numbers built like so, just the powers of this root, it will be a solution to my equation, to my difference equation asterisk. That's the difference equation asterisk. The person, who, the person who first observed this, I don't want to say he's a genius. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a deep observation. It is a deep observation. It just, you can't see it from just from the top of your head. That if you, did, if you take something like this, it will be a solution. We're going to check it. If there will be a proof for this lemma. It will follow momentarily. I'll show you why this is true. But the showing why this is true is it's a relatively easy task. I mean, it's not an easy task. But it's, it's still it's a doable task. You know, you just you try to plug it in and see if it works or not. Whereas guessing that this thing will be a solution, it's a, it should be very, very insightful in this business in order to guess something like this. Later on, probably, if any of you will continue the, your mathematical studies, you will probably see some reasons why this is so. Right now, of course, with, with, the, with the knowledge we have right now, more, I can more or less understand how this happens. But... At, the, at first, when, it just, when, people, when people first meet the equation like this, guessing, an equation, guessing a solution in this form, it's not an easy task. Anyway, the second part of my lemma says this. If my alpha, a complex number, this is not it. I mean, there are some other solutions of different form to the same difference, to, to the same difference equation. So if my alpha is a complex number now of this type, such that my polynomial factors like this. So here's my polynomial, build of the coefficients from the difference equations. If alpha is a, if alpha is a solution, we know from the, our discussion last week, from the discussion of fundamental theorem of algebra, we know that in that case, you can factor out this linear factor, z take alpha. However, however, if you can factor more of these factors, if you can factor m such factors rather than just one, if alpha is of this type, and I don't know, I probably I haven't, dis I haven't introduced this terminology, but such alpha, it's called the root of multiplicity m. That's a just definition is, which is now streamlined into the, into the statement of this lemma. 
if you have an alpha like this, obviously it will be a root. If you put alpha into this polynomial, this bracket will vanish, so it will be a root, but it's, you know more. You know that actually you have a factorization with the power m here. Such a root is called the root of multiplicity m. So if alpha is the root of multiplicity m, m at least 2 and q some other polynomial, q some other po some polynomial, then look what we have. Then, on the top of this fundamental solution, we will have another series of fundamental solutions. We will have a fund fundamental solution like this. Compare this solution to my original one like this. We will have a fundamental solution like this. And we will have, we will have a series of such solutions all the way until the m take one. So until you take your, you allow your n your, in, uh, your index n be taken to the power n take 1. m, m for Mary, m take 1. There, there is a shorter way to write this. There is a shorter way to write this. You can index these solutions with the k index. And you can em emphasize that k changes between 0 and m take 1. 0, 1 is from here, of course. So if your alpha is a root of multiple, not just a simple root, like in part one of this lemma. But if your alpha is the root of multiplicity m, and you can show that, then you will have a whole range of other solutions as well for your difference equation. Of course, everything now, I mean, if you believe in this lemma, I'll, I'll give you some short sections of the proof of that lemma. If you believe in this lemma, you can now see that the whole weight of solving of difference equations moved on to, this, to the task of solving algebraic equations, something we do in complex numbers, something we discuss with you on Thursday. And that's why the complex numbers are helpful. And this task, um, it's not an easy task. On the other hand, of course, with the modern computational computational facilities, you can all, you basically you can, you, can all, you can solve every polynomial equations with a very high accuracy, approximately, I mean. But in principle, that's what happens. So, the statement finishes like this. So this sequence is a sol uh, are solutions to the equations mark asterisk. Obviously, I mean, of course, I just, it was my, uh, what I'm saying is, uh, what I'm trying to say is this. If you read such a lemma in a book or in a lecture notes, normally people never split this into parts, part one and part two. Because part one is effectively, it's, it's, it's a part one is a special case of a part two. You just allow, you just allow here k being zero. The reason I did the splitting is just because for the demonstration purposes, it's easier first to digest the proof of the first part and then try to see the, the proof of the second part. For the, it, it, so I did the splitting for the exposition purposes only. Just logically speaking, just there's no point of doing such a splitting. So let's just look at the proof. And I, sp I split my proof in two parts as well. So we're gonna just discuss with you proof of the part one, which is relatively easy. What we should do, all we should do, we should take the sequence, we should put it across this difference equations, difference equations, sorry, and we should see if we can come up with zero on the right hand side. We'll just do it. So I'm gonna do it in the because it's quite extensive writing. So I'm gonna use the what I call the sigma notations, the abbreviated way of writing sums. So for instance, this polynomial in sigma notation. It will look like this. It would be sigma or sum where index s changes between 0 and r, a sub s, r to the power r take s. Do we have any problems in expanding this symbol? Does anyone have any difficulties with understanding what the symbol means? You just take this common term of your notations and you replace s with all possible values between 0 and r and you add the terms up. If you do this expansion, that will be exactly this line. This is just a shorter way to write this piece of formula. So if I use this now, look at this, what I'm gonna say. The left-hand side of my asterisk formula, this one, if I sub in this expression in, it will be like this. It will be sum s between zero and r, a s, and then my different sequence. If I now sub in the value for this x n take s, 
this is something like so. And that resembles my polynomial. Just compare this expression with the expression for my polynomial. All we see is just my z is replaced with alpha, and here we have n rather than r. I can identify this with this by doing a very simple trick, by factoring out this, this much alpha. If I factor out this much alpha from this summation, the remaining part will be sum when s changes between 0 and r. Here's my coefficient, as. And here my alpha. So if I factor out this much alpha from this term, the remaining amount of alphas will be like this, r take s. And that is exactly the expression for my polynomial. So that is exactly the expression where z is replaced with alpha. So that is exactly the expression like this, and that is 0. And that's all there is to it. I don't know how comfortable you are with the sigma notation. If, because you're going to, I mean, you, have you started integration in the, in the calculus part of this topic? If you started integration, you've been seeing sigma notations quite extensively already. So that's why I'm, I'm presenting this argument with a sigma notation. But if you're not yet comfortable with that, I strongly recommend take this piece of argument with a piece of paper and a pen next to it and try to write it with no sigma notation. If you do that, after you finish, you will be comfortable with the sigma notations.